Hello there, today we're going to explore the different types of cassette tapes. No BS, let's just keep it simple. First up, we have the standard Type 1 cassette. This is the most common type of cassette, and it was around for many years. It's cheap, it's easy to manufacture, it's made from ground up ferric oxide, that's iron rust to you and I, and has proved to be remarkably stable and useful as a type of cassette. They have been improved over the years, making them less hissy and better frequency response. And good type 1 is a good thing to have. All the brands made these, and by and large, they are all good. But there are some no-name junk ones out there. So, buyer beware. That brings me on to the type 0. The type 0 is not really a type. It's a name given to a no-name tape that is not worth using. It's also referring to a badly aged tape that has little hope of sounding good. So when you've got a tape that just doesn't doesn't do it, you say, oh, it's a type zero. As I say, not really a thing, but a thing. You'll hear it around. Right, next we come on to chrome tapes, or type two. This type of tape is excellent if you're looking for something to do high quality recordings on. It features a chromium dioxide coating. This gives a lower hiss and a smooth high frequencies making it a top choice for music producers. The chromium dioxide has a finer grain and holds the magnetism better than the Type 1. However, it has to be recorded on a machine with Type 2 recording capabilities as it needs to be driven harder by the machine. They can be played back though in any cassette player. Moving on to Type 3. We have the ferrochrome cassette. This is a really good cassette, but it's a chrome cassette with a ferric oxide coating added. It provides a better bass response and is more affordable than the later to arrive metal tapes. It was intended to be the next step, giving better overall sound quality than either Type 1 or Type 2. This they did, but the cost was high, and the benefits did not match the expense, so they failed to sell in large numbers. You could record on these in a normal Type 1 deck, and they will give superb results. They are, however, not as good as the next one on the list. Next we have the metal cassette. This is the Type 4. This is a significant upgrade from the Type 2 and it features a metal coating that provides a higher quality of sound. The metal has much, much higher magnetic properties than all the others. It takes a lot more to drive and to get the recording onto the tape, but the results are worth it. It provides clean, dynamic recordings that are much superior to Type 2. The extra cost is worth it, or at least it was when they came out. You pay more for the performance of these, and they delivered. Unfortunately, now they are very, very expensive, and you have to make the judgment yourself if it's worth it. They can only be recorded on a metal-capable cassette deck. They can, however, be played back in any player. Lastly, we have the digital compact cassette. It was meant to be a successor to the standard cassette. It was a good idea, but too little too late. The sound quality was excellent, but the machines and the tapes were expensive and hard to produce. They were very expensive to make, and they weren't that reliable. And that's it. Those are the six types of cassette tapes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos like this. Bye-bye.